Hey, if you've been considering buying lawn care accounts, lawn mowing accounts, I'd like to give you some ideas to help you make the decision and decide if it's right for you. So one thing to consider at the outset, the vast majority of lawn mowing businesses, lawn care businesses are not sellable, meaning that they're not real businesses. They can't run independent of the owner. So what you're really doing is you're just acquiring accounts. So it's really important to understand when you're valuing the business. The vast majority, all you're doing is buying accounts from the owner. You're not really buying a business. Yeah, maybe you're buying some equipment and trucks. That doesn't make a business. A business is the management team, the processes, the procedures, the marketing systems. It's all that other stuff. So what is happening most of the time, you're buying accounts and you're buying assets. Generally, I don't even like to buy assets. I'd rather go buy my own trucks and my own equipment. So you're really focused on buying accounts. And the way I believe you think about buying accounts is what can you go acquire an account for on your own? So if you're organically growing your business, meaning you're growing it yourself, you're not acquiring outside accounts and bringing them into your business, you're growing organically from within, what does it cost you to get an account? Does it cost you 100, 150, 200 dollars? What does it cost to get an account through door hangers, uh, postcards, letters, pay-per-click, SEO, which is organic search, referrals, door knocking? So what's that cost? If it's $150, then the top end that I'd be willing to pay to acquire an account personally is $150. The reason it's the top end is every day, all day long, I would rather acquire my own accounts organically than buy accounts. The reason for it is when I send out marketing and I speak with a prospect on the phone and we sell them, they have chosen us, they've bought into our philosophy, they've bought into the way they, that we work. Whereas when you acquire accounts, they didn't choose you, they didn't buy into you, they may not like your the way you operate, they may not like the changes that you're going to have to make to make them a profitable account because let's face it, generally, if somebody is selling their company, it's because something's wrong with the business, not because they're making hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years, uh, dollars a year. Those guys that are making huge amounts of money that run awesome businesses and are looking for an exit, they're generally selling real businesses. But the majority of businesses for sale are not real businesses, and they're being sold because somebody's burned out, done, tired, it's not working. So generally, when you acquire accounts, there's something to be fixed. And when you make the changes that need to be made and you change the original agreement you had with the client, they don't like that and they have reason to shop around. And so a account you acquire yourself is far more valuable than an account you acquire. Let me give you another example of, and so remember my main point here is that if I wouldn't want to pay more for an account than I could acquire that account for on my own and I would discount the value, the value of the account I'm acquiring because of the risk I'm incurring knowing that quite a number of the accounts I'm acquiring will potentially leave because they didn't choose me. The other thing to consider is how do you price the account? So I gave the example of what does it cost to acquire one. Another example is let's say that you, um, let's say that you decide to pay the total value of the account, so one year's worth of revenue. So let's say it's a lawn mowing account, it pays $40 a week. Let's just, sim to keep it simple, let's say that's a th that account's worth $1,000. If you buy, if you pay $1,000 to acquire that account, one times gross revenue, and that account is worth about 20% net, meaning you take about 20% of what that job pays a year and you put it in your pocket, that would take you five years to break even on that account. You're gonna basically mow that account for five years just to break even on the price you paid for it before in year six you start to actually make a dollar. Now you can make that type of stuff work if you have a great back end, you acquire the account and then you sell them lots of other really profitable services. But that's not what most people are doing. So generally you can't make the math even work to pay one times gross revenue on the accounts. Going back to my point of I wouldn't pay more than I could acquire the account for myself. So I tend to prefer to value accounts like what we're talking about here for three times mowing or five times mowing or less if possible. You have to determine what it's worth to you and you have to determine at what point in the year you're buying those accounts. If I'm buying them at the end of the year, they're worth way less than if I'm buying them at the beginning of the year. Because at the end of the year, we might go through the off season, there's a higher probability I'm going to lose those. So think about those factors as you're making the decision. My general answer is it's not worth acquiring accounts. 
The reason you do it is when you don't know how to build your own business through marketing or when you're a big company and you're trying to grow so fast that you can't generate enough leads and grow fast enough organically and there's an or you have so much attrition that the only way to replenish it and keep your company at the same size and growing is to go out and acquire businesses. That's not the situation the majority of us are in. And so those are usually the reasons you acquire accounts, in my opinion, and I just don't generally think it's worth it. There are opportunities, but you have to be super choosy.